Okay, so this is video number two in the how to avoid online dating scammers um, and also narcissists. I guess they're probably kind of one and the same. I'll do another video on specifically online dating narcissists who aren't particularly scammers, okay? So this one's more about just how to avoid online dating scammers. So there's 15 red flags and all. First one is poor grammar, spelling, or strange word choice. Now, um, you know, a lot of these scammers, they're operating from overseas. They have whole internet cafes. I saw this Dateline episode on it. It was really wild. They have these internet cafes where these people, it's like their job. Like, like they go to work to be an internet scammer and they sit down and there's rows of, you know, 20 people in each row and they all have their computer monitor and they're chatting with, you know, um, dozens if not hundreds of people an hour. It's crazy. Like the sheer volume that these people do. So, um, because they're overseas, you know, English isn't their first language, their grammar, their spelling, their word choice is going to seem off to us. So some, t some telltale signs of this would be words like greetings or hello dear or dearest or um, maybe not using contractions. So they might not use words like I'm, they might use I am or isn't, they will use is not. And that's because when English is generally taught as a second language, it's more formal English is taught. They don't teach really contractions or, or slang as much. So they're not going to use slang. That would be another sign. Uh, let's see. Number two, their profile doesn't have much on it. Okay. So again, this is, it's a numbers game for them, right? So they're trying to appeal to the, the vast majority of people out there. Um, because they're catching on, I think, to the fact that we're catching on, that there are a lot of scammers out there. They don't really want to write too much because their their poor English is going to give them away. So it might be just a couple of sentences, um, but what they generally do touch on in their scams is going to be some sort of pity ploy. They might put in there that they are a widow or a widower, um, that they are in the military, or that they have uh, a good profession. They might refer to themselves, I saw this one uh, recently, that they are a professional engineer, which I guess compared to all of the unprofessional engineers out there. But they're going to give you this, uh, this sense of that they are a solid, stable, good-looking person, right? That's the vibe of their profile. Their profile might have three or four pictures on it, um, probably not a lot more. The, the scammers that tend to target men the female photos that are up tend to be very sexy and um, tend to be, you know, like a 23 year old bikini model. Whereas the photos that are targeting women, the guy either seems very dashing and handsome or he seems, you know, big and buff, like this, you know, rugged military dude. They kind of put these different like archetypes of like the ideal woman or the ideal man on their site. So pay attention to that. There's, okay, so red flag number three, there's a portrayal of success, heroism, or great beauty. Again, this is kind of what I was just talking about with red flag number two. So they're gonna talk about um, possibly being, you know, maybe they're this engineer, but the, this here's the weird thing, is they can't just be like a regular engineer. They've gotta have, um, they, they have their own company, and they um, are very prestigious, and they have this job lined up through the ambassador of Paraguay. <laughs> that like that's that's why they're there and they were you know handpicked to do this because they are such a professional engineer apparently um, military service again they're generally not you know kind of uh, your low-ranking military person they're gonna portray themselves as being of a decent rank but if you ask them they're not gonna know like the different ranks so that would be kind of a way to, to flush them out too is just you know if they're talking like they're in the Air Force and they're using you know um, the different ranks that are maybe in the army you know they don't I don't know if they have caught on that our military service has different ranks for different branches of the service but regardless it's, they're always going to be, in, if they're in the military, it's some sort of like heroic branch of the military. And, um, you know, they're just incredibly brave. And of course, great beauty speaks for itself. So number four, something seems off. So if you've been chatting with them, even for a couple days, you probably have noticed that they are just sending you a ton of communication, like right away. They're emailing you all the time. They, they immediately, you know, they want to start chatting with you. Um, they just seem so incredibly interested and infatuated with you, even though, 
you know, maybe you've only told them kind of just a few things about your life, but they just, um, it just seems too good to be true. Like something seems off. It's probably the, the strange language. It's probably the amount of emails that you're getting. It's them wanting to spend hours texting and, and talking with you. So pay attention to that. If your gut instinct or your spidey sense is going off, then something's off. Red flag number five, they wanna get you off the site. Well, because online dating sites don't tolerate fraudulent behavior. So they would cancel their account if they were caught. They know this, they can't have this happen because they're investing you know, money to, to put these profiles on. So they're gonna to wanna to get you into some sort of chat like Yahoo, um, Messenger, um, maybe is AOL even still around? I don't know, but you know, some sort of like text message kind of um, communication. Notice that they are not gonna wanna do Skype. They're not gonna wanna do FaceTime. They're not gonna wanna do any of these visual chats, which is very, very strange. There's absolutely no reason in the year 2015 that a person would not want to do a face-to-face -face chat. That absolutely makes zero sense. If they really are this, you know, million dollar entrepreneur and or this, um, you know, military person, people have access to video cameras. And if they're saying, well, they're in the military and they can't, you know, they, they don't have access because their computer's down, I guarantee you, my ex-husband was in the military, okay? I guarantee you that the guy in the next bunk has a computer with a camera. Like that is so common that, um, People don't, people don't go overseas really without a computer with a camera. So um, yeah, just know that. <laughs> so they're gonna wanna get you off the site. Number six, there's gonna be some sort of geographic challenge. So maybe on their profile, they were saying that they're originally from Iowa or wherever. And now because they're this you know, multi-million dollar entrepreneur, they have to go sell this business they have in Paraguay. And, um, you know, it's gonna be like, you know, it's a $30 million business and they're gonna be back in about two to three weeks. Or that they are in the military, but they're retiring or they're getting out in about two to three weeks. It's always about two to three weeks. And I think the mat that is about, that must be, well, you know what though? Okay, I, I have figured it out. From my experience, dating narcissists, I've dated two covert narcissists, it's about the two to three week point that really works. Like at about the three, end of the third week, victims are tend to be hooked. And it's all of this, um, you know, this attention that they're giving. They do a really good, good job of, of hooking you within that amount of time. And for them, it's because at about that point, they're gonna be hitting you up for money. So they know that we know to not send money to people that we don't know that are especially if they're overseas like that sounds crazy i don't think in this day and age anybody out there um you know <laughs> the, people know enough to not get to not send money to people overseas right um especially how like public and he's, dr phil talks about all these scam artists and stuff so it's not so underground as it used to be but uh but you will send money to somebody that you think might be your fiance or might be a very serious boyfriend. So they, they know they have about a 10 day window there to really get you to believe that this relationship has is going to lead to whatever you want it to lead to, either being a very, very serious boyfriend or to, to being a husband, okay? Um, but yes, they're always stuck overseas for some sort of strange reason. Number seven is charming and love bombing. So love bombing, it's constant communication, it's constant compliments. This is a trick that con artists, narcissists, um, different antisocials like sociopaths, psychopaths, and cults use. And it's basically constant communication and constant compliments. And they will want to talk to you more and more and more as time, very quickly as time progresses. So you might find yourself getting, you know, three, four, five, 25 or so emails from these people they're wanting to chat with you all the time. They're setting up times for you to chat with them. Um, they're getting upset if you're not there. The victims are tend to interpret this as, wow, they really care. We really are in this relationship. I mean, he got really upset with me because I couldn't chat last night. Well, no, he didn't, they don't care. Like, obviously they don't care, right? It's an internet cafe or like number 417 that day. Um, but they know that it, the more distance you're putting between you and them, the less um, kind of hypnotic effect they can have on you. 
in order to run their scam, they have to lure you in. They have, they only have those, you know, 10 days or so to convince you that they're the love of your life. So they really need as much of your time as possible to, to get that done. Okay, red flag number eight, they have an accent. So again, they might say that they're living in Michigan, right? But they're this like million dollar, whatever, this amazing person who's overseas. But then they might, you you know, you might end up talking to them over the phone and then you realize they have an accent. Well, that doesn't add up, right? But then they might say, well, they, they lived abroad or they were born in Sweden or they went to the University of London. I've heard that one a lot lately or they spent some time overseas for some sort of reason, and then that that's supposed to explain their accent. So if somebody has an accent, that's a red flag. Number nine is mirroring. So during this love bombing stage, they're gathering all of this information about you. They wanna hear everything about you. They wanna hear everything about your children. They wanna hear everything about your hopes and your dreams and your fears and just everything. They find you to be absolutely fascinating. But if you notice, they really don't wanna talk about themselves. And that's because, of course, they are a con artist and they don't really have a self. It's just like a narcissist. It's just that mask that they are wearing to get what they want, which in this case is money. But they're gathering all of this, like, ugh, my nose, it just, they're gathering all of this the concept of what you're wanting in the perfect life and in the perfect person. And then they're going to mirror or like reflect this back to you, right? And so it, for the victim, it creates this, this sense of a soulmate connection. Like, oh my God, this person is so perfect for me. Everything I want and I'm about and my beliefs and my values and my morals are the same with them too. That's so crazy. We have this just undeniable connection. But realize again, it's all manufactured. Number 10, future faking. This kind of goes hand in hand with mirroring. So they're gathering all this information with you, from you, they're mirroring it back and then they're faking this ideal future. So let's say you're a single mom and you really wanna find somebody, obviously that probably loves kids, right? Let's say you have three kids. Well, they're gonna, they're gonna talk, they're probably, you're gonna have talked about that and then they're gonna say that they really love being a father, um, that they, you know, if they had their way, they would have, you know, a ton more kids and, um, they're just going to go on and on and on about how, how that would be so fantastic if they could have that in their life. And it's really, it's whatever you want, right? So if you wanted to have a llama farm in Peru, they're probably going to talk about how that would be fantastic as well. If you were, let's say if you were even, um, disabled, I, and I've heard this before too, or you're, you, you're sick or you have kind of limited mobility, then they're going to say, well, they have, um, this happened to a friend of mine. She had said that, um, you know, she has um, has this health condition, she can't really do a whole lot. And they had, the scammer had told her, you know, he was raised that you take care of the person that you love and was totally content to, even though he loved to go out and about and do things, um, but he would be totally okay with staying home and taking care of her. So it's whatever she needed, he was there for her. Number 11, rushing intimacy. This is, you know, they have about a 10 day span in order to get you to fall in love with them, right? And to believe that there's this serious relationship that's happening between you two. And that's why they're rushing intimacy. That's probably why you're feeling like something's off. Number 12, you start questioning yourself, okay? So they're gonna start rushing intimacy. They're gonna start talking about how they wanna fly into the airport in your town and how they wanna spend the weekend with you and how you're the love of their life. They've never met anybody like this. They're gonna go, they might even start sending you um, uh, you know, a flower. My friend got a, a, a long stem red rose in the mail. She got some chocolate. Um, they might start sending you small gifts. So that you might start thinking, well, this is legit because scammers don't send gifts, right? Wrong. They do. Um, if you're questioning yourself, if you're asking your friends what they think about it, if you're Googling it, then that's a red flag. Number 13, some sort of disaster strikes. So it's always about this, when they're supposed to come home, right? This two to three week point that they're in the hospital, they've been kidnapped, they've somehow run out of money, they're stuck somewhere and they need you to send them money, which is red flag number 14. They're gonna ask you for money. So anybody that asks you for money, especially if they're from overseas, it is a hands down scam. Last red flag, you can't find anything about them online. This is the year 2015, like 99.95% of the people out there have some sort of online presence. There's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's YouTube, there's Pinterest, there's something. So if there's nothing about them online, odds are they are not a legitimate person. 
So this next video, I'm gonna go over the different ways you can really determine if you are dating a scammer and what you can do about it. Okay, I'll see you soon, thanks. Okay, so this is video number four in the um, How to Avoid an Online Scammer series. And in this video, I wanted to go over how I used to approach online dating 10, 13 years ago versus how I approach it now. And I met my first husband, my only husband, on through an online dating site, you know, 10, 13 ish years ago. And that worked out really, really well. My approach back then was very different than it is today because the world of online dating has like dramatically changed. And I was really shocked by this when I got back into dating after my marriage. I just, I, I felt like Rip Van Winkle. Like I woke up and I'm like, what has happened here? Cause online dating just radically changed. So how I went about it back then was um, I was really sketched out to um, meet a strange man off the internet, right? Because we're all kind of taught, like, don't talk to strangers, don't, it's ter a terrible idea to, like, meet strangers off the internet. And remind me, this was before Craigslist, this was before people were actually, you know, meetup.com or groups like that where people were meeting online. So they were, um, you just didn't really meet with strangers. So at that time, what I was doing was I was spending weeks of intense, like emailing back and forth with people to see if we had that connection, to see if we had that chemistry, to see if they were safe enough um, to meet in person. And we really, I didn't talk, I, generally, I don't even think I ever talked to my ex-husband before we met. If we did, it was maybe once. But I was really hesitant to give my phone number out again to like a stranger that I met off the internet. Like that seemed, you know, 10, 13 years ago, like a really bad idea. Um, I also went into dating thinking, you know, I want to go on a proper date. I would like to go out for, you know, dinner and a movie or, or, or something along those lines. So fast forward to today, I have very quickly learned that there are so many just liars and scammers and con artists online. And you, you really, it's a bad idea to use that old fashioned approach to dating because it's, it's on, especially with online dating, it is really like just this narcissist's playground out there, this con artist central arena. And so I would encourage you to go about it with the idea of guarding your heart and guarding your time. Those are kind of like the two main concepts, okay? And, and not guarding them in the sense that you're not going to be open with those things, but to realize that those things are very valuable, right? Who you are is valuable. Your time is valuable. And getting to know you and for you to give that to another human being is, it's, it's an honor. It's something that's earned. It's just not blindly given to everybody. Okay, so treating yourself with that, that level of respect, treating your time too with that level of respect is, is really key. So what I, what I do now, I try to keep that in mind because I have thrown away countless hours and, um, you know, many, many tears over dates and online stuff where it just didn't work out. So here's my new process. So I have learned that you can really click with a person in about five different ways. You can click with a person visually. So like you can see their picture or you can see them from across the room, right? You can click with a person um, through, um, I'm going to just use more online stuff. So you can click with a person through their profile pictures. That's the first thing you see. You can click with the person through writing. So you can see, you know, are they kind of about on the same page as you? There's, there's that, that click, even, you, even though you might not be aware of it on some level, it does register, you know, are they kind of using the same words as you are, you know, is their writing style similar? Us as human beings, we tend to be attracted to people through, as friends and as through partners. Um, we tend to be attracted to people that are like us. <laughs> that sounds really narcissistic, right? But it's true. And I, I'm sure that there's a really great like biological reason for that, but that's what it is. So you can kind of tell a lot about a person through their writing. Is it similar to yours? And are, is their spelling and grammar about on par with yours? And then you can tell a lot about a person through text messages. So now it kind of takes that writing to a different level. So now there's that conversational tone and is the conversation, is it, you know, is it awkward? Is it stilted or is it really natural and comfortable? Do you guys kind of have the same sense of humor? Um, you can tell a lot through text messaging. 
And you can tell a lot when you talk on the phone with somebody. So again, you know, is there that chemistry with hearing their voice or is there just something about their voice or their laugh or their sense of humor that like nails on a chalkboard for you? Um, you know, you can click with somebody and then ideally in person, that's really what's important, right? <laughs> like you need to meet this person in person and actually see if there's that chemistry. So I have very quickly learned in order to guard your heart and guard your time, you have to very quickly go from seeing if there's that initial connection to like all five of those things to getting through to like meeting in person as soon as possible. Like ideally within like less than seven days of chatting with somebody or first meeting them on the internet. Um, so what I do, you know, I said before, I would email and stuff for, you know, weeks or maybe like a month on end. I don't do that anymore. So what I do now is I do um, maybe two or three emails back and forth to see if there's that chemistry, to see, you know, if there's enough in common, if there's enough of a click to progress to the phone. So if they ask me for my phone number, you know, ideally, you know, the third or maybe third or fourth email, if they're not asking for my phone number, I take that as either they're just online dating to get attention or, you know, they're just, they're bored or they're not, they don't seem like that vested in meeting if they're not asking for a phone number within, you know, three or four emails. So that I just kind of, I let go. I'm like, well, okay, they're not that interested. So, so be it. So then if they do call, I, you know, again, I, I have made the mistake this time around spending hours on the phone with people, especially if you find somebody you have a ton of stuff in common with and you really click and it's exciting and, um, and I'm a talker. I know big shock, right? I, so I'm a talker and, and especially if I get with another talker, that's, we just, you know, hours go by. So, um, but I've learned that's a huge mistake because then if you progress to meeting and then there's no in-person connection, it's super awkward and it, it it's hard because somebody has their feelings hurt. Either you have your feelings hurt because they're not interested in you or you're not interested in them and now you have to let them go, let them down. And you've already spent, you know, 16 hours talking to them, you know all about everything. And it's just, it's really awkward. So you want to spare, you know, you, and again, it, you want to value yourself and your emotions and your time, but you also want to value other people's emotions and their time. So to kind of think of it like that. So you want to meet right away. You don't want to do, I strongly caution you against doing like a traditional date where it's dinner and a movie. You really want to, to, to do just a date, just, just meet, just meet and make sure that they are who they claim that they are. So it's not uncommon, again, for people online dating to show up and the picture's 10 years old or the picture's 100 pounds less or the picture's not even them. I've heard I've heard crazy horror stories from different guys that I've gone out with, the, uh, wild, like online dating stories where you just think, what was this other person thinking that's so disrespectful of their time and their emotions to pretend to be something that you're not or that you're not that person today? That's not cool. So. Um, meet right away, meet for coffee, you know, or a drink or something like that. Don't, you know, again, guarding your time. Don't meet for like more than an hour. This is just to kind of see if they are who they say that they are. And if there's that initial chemistry, because if you go out for dinner and a movie and guess what, you're going to know within 10 minutes, if there's that chemistry between you and that other person. And if there's not, which there's a solid chance that there's not right. I mean, dating is just the numbers game. Or if your spidey sense is going off about them, now you're stuck with them for like three and a half, four hours. Like you, you want to be able to just meet, see if there's that chemistry and then set up a second date, like a more real date, right? Like dinner and a movie or whatever. Um, so don't, you know, try to avoid a big long date for your, your first meeting, just something quick, something to make sure that you, that you click and then go from there. And, um, so once you know that there is that chemistry enough that you really want to go on a real date with them, that's when this whole like red flags of a narcissist series should go. That's when that's, this is all starts. So now hopefully you've watched this video series, you, you know, and I'll link to it down below, but you know, all of the red flags of a narcissist. And now you need to give them time to see if any of them surface. And again, keep in mind, the video series, it's not for you to be able to like formally diagnose somebody as having a personality disorder. That's not the point. The point of the, the red flag series is 
this it was it's a broad brush overview of this can be troubling or deal breaker behavior this is behavior of people that are highly manipulative most of the time but also with that said we all have some of these red flags it's just going to be in different degrees of um you know different degrees so you have to go slow and you have to be able to discern whether or not you know what they're telling you is the truth whether or not your spidey sense is going off all of these things so knowing the red flags giving them give them two to three weeks do not try i know i know it's hard i know it's hard do not try to get invest, emotionally invested within that like first two to three weeks because this is the time that you need to think clearly about this other person and to see if these red flags are showing up and and being okay with walking away again this is about being choosy not about being chosen so you want to make a good decision within those first two or three weeks and the best way to do it is to kind of keep guarding your heart and guarding your time right so all of the red flags that you gloss over guess what fast forward you know six months six years 16 years you're not you've now really hurt yourself emotionally and you've wasted a lot of time with the wrong person because you move too fast or you allowed them to let you move too fast which was my this is what happened to me right so knowing that like that hopefully you can avoid this next time so making sure too that you have those high standards of behavior that you expect in another person so knowing that, again knowing this ahead of time knowing that hey you know what if this person stands me stands me up that's they're out like again being focused on being um, choosy not on being chosen I don't tolerate people not um, you know standing me up or tolerate people standing me up I don't tolerate being called names I don't tolerate somebody who's got a temper um, you know or they're not good with kids or animals that, that kind of stuff is a deal breaker stuff for me everybody's gonna have their own kind of deal breaker stuff hopefully a lot of those are, are part of what is a deal breaker for you you know lying cheating stealing some of those red flags should be deal breaker behavior um, and the whole goal is not to give you know people get caught up with a lot of these narcissists because they just think well nobody's this is me talking about me <laughs> you know you kind of give people the benefit of the doubt you think nobody's perfect and you gloss over a lot of these red flags but yeah really nobody is perfect but there's um, degrees of troubling behavior and you know if a person's got a pattern of lying and cheating and stealing they're probably going to continue that pattern unless they've been you know gone through like really intense therapy and have ironed that out and even if they say that they have done that great give them a couple years and see if that's the truth but if you rush into something when this person's got all of these red flags up you know you you, you gotta just slow it down so having those high standards for what you expect in a partner having solid boundaries so if they start violating your standards that you're okay with getting rid of them again being choosy not on being chosen so that is kind of how I go about online dating now I hope you can gain something from that um, again if you have any questions comments concerns frustrations ideas for videos you just want to say hi um, you need some support what have you please feel free to contact me my contact info is down below uh, my name is Dana and I will talk to you soon you guys lots of love to you and um, I w sincerely wish you all of the health and healing possible okay take care bye